All right, I'm gonna do a hydraulic filter change on a John Deere 4310. Um, this is a really straightforward uh, filter change. The only, <clears throat> the only uh, thing that you wanna kinda prevent is all the fluid from inside the tractor, um, you know, leaking out when you actually spin the filter off and put the new filter on. And there's a, there's a trick to, to kinda minimizing the amount of fluid that you'll lose when you spin the old filter off and put the new filter on. And I'm gonna show you that here um, so what you want to do is get a shop vacuum, basically any, any shop vacuum that you would use around your house. Uh, you want to take that vacuum and you're going you're gonna to first um, clean up the area, the fill uh, plug for the hydraulics. You're going to take a soft brush, not a wire brush, it's a soft brush. Clean up any dust or debris that's in that area of that cap first. Then you're going to take off the, um, there's a little bracket that holds the hose or the, the center link when you're using a three-point hitch on the machine. Take that right off. There's two bolts, and you want to put the bolts back in about halfway. The reason why you put the bolts back in about halfway is because that's what's going to kind of help the hose stay in place when you pull this cap off on the shop vacuum. So you're going you're gonna to take off the cap, and you're going to put that to the side. And so what you're going to be left with is just an opening for the fill, and then your shop vac hose is going to go right in that area. So you see that you're going to you're going to actually turn the vacuum on, and you're going to you're going to put it right on the opening of the fill, and that's going to create a vacuum, and that vacuum is going to hold, believe it or not, going to help to hold all the fluid in the tractor as you take off the filter and put the uh, put the new filter on. So that's going to be <clears throat> that's going to be the tip that I can offer. Um, to minimize any fluid loss when you're doing this. The other big tip is that these filters are huge, right? And this is gonna be probably too large for a standard um, oil filter wrench. So like this is a very large filter and you're not gonna be able to get the wrench on there. So you can try to take it off by hand and you can probably put a set of gloves, a pair of gloves on you, like a leather pair of gloves. You might be able to get it by hand, but if it's really on there, good, and they usually are because you don't usually change these until I think every 400 hours, or if the hydraulics become slow, you would change them before that. But uh, what you can do is you can put, you know, a little clamp on there. Uh, you want to collapse the filter, turn down the clamp just enough to collapse it where the clamp is now able to grip it, and then you could turn it off that way with the clamp or. A lot of people take a long flathead screwdriver and they'll punch it right through. I don't like to do that um, because you're putting you're putting a um, screwdriver through the filter while it's on the machine and it's probably not going to go back into the machine. But if you ever had any uh, pieces of metal go back into the machine for some reason, you wouldn't be able to get those out very easily. It could damage it. So I don't like to puncture the filters. I like to just collapse them down with a clamp and then uh, you can spin that off. Of course, if you had a uh, filter wrench that was large enough, which you can buy, uh, you could put that on there and take it right off. Either way would, would work. But that's the second tip. If you don't have a large filter wrench, you know, use a clamp, uh, squeeze it on there, you know, four or five turns so it's, it's actually collapsing just a little bit, gives it something to grip, and then you can, you can take your hand and you can literally spin it, you know, now, and you can spin it off. Um, and when you put that on, you're gonna you're gonna do it hand tight, right? So you don't want to you don't want to you put a clamp on the new filter to put it on. Of course, you're just gonna do that hand tight. All right. Okay. Um, that's that's pretty much it. I was able to to do what I explained, and the the amount of fluid that I took off took out of this machine was literally probably no more than the amount that the filter actually holds, right? So I've got Gosh, maybe maybe a quart in there, and I bet you that holds about a quart. So, um, using that method, it's really great. I've done this on not just John Deere's, but any any tractor brand. This will work, um, and it just minimizes the amount of fluid that you're going to lose. You know, obviously, if your fluid is going to be changed and is dirty, you don't really care. You're going to drain it anyways. Then you don't have to worry about doing this. But if your if your fluid's clean. And on this machine, it's, it's really clean. I don't want to have to drain the fluid just to replace it. Um, this helps to reduce the, the clean, you know, good uh, fluid loss that you may, you may be um, able to avoid. So that's pretty much it. I got the filter on there. On, on these filters, I've always noticed that the John Deere emblem is typically facing right on the outside. So that's a good, a good way to kind of 
kind of give you an indication of is the filter rod tight enough. Um, you don't want to kill these. The, the seals on these are, are pretty strong. And uh, if you do notice a drip, let's say after you, you operate the machine for you know 20 minutes or so, you can always tighten it a little bit more. Um, but again, the filter, usually the emblem is facing out and that's kind of by design, I would imagine, where the threads are on the filters. And uh, the seals on these are really, really good and they don't usually leak. And that's, that's pretty much it. I would say the total time on this was 15 minutes, but, I, but honestly it was 10 or 12 minutes on the setup of the, of the vacuum part. That's all back together now. I got the bracket back on there and you can see what that bracket looks like. Again, this is your center link um, holder, right? If you had the three point hitch accessories on there and arms and the center link was, that would hold the center link up and out of the way so it wouldn't run it over when you, when you move the machine. Um, and this is the cap I was talking about. It's back on with the two bolts. So if you, if you factor in all the, the total time for this, for this part, for this change, I would say it's, it's 12 minutes of setting everything up and about three minutes of actually changing the filter. Uh, so 15 minutes, uh, super easy. Filters on these, I think they're about 50 bucks. Um, it's a John Deere filter. Again, you know, don't, don't try to use a generic filter on the John Deere's. Just use the John Deere filters that, they, that come from the factory. They're affordable and it's the exact filter um, for the machine. Uh, and that's pretty much how much fluid you're gonna, you're gonna expect to lose if you do it this way. All right, that's, that's pretty much it.